G'day everyone and welcome to part two of how to convert your RC controller to fly with just one hand. Um, if you haven't already watched part one, I'd recommend going back and watching it. That way everything I'm about to show you will make a lot more sense. Um, so in this video I'm going to pull this controller apart again and I'll use this one as well to show you how to wire it up and uh, get it all working. Alright, let's get started on this. First of all, you're going to need a few basic tools to get you going. Obviously, a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll probably need some hex head screwdrivers. Maybe a pair of pliers, some side cutters, a bit of tape. You'll need some um, Loctite. Uh, you could also use super glue, but I reckon Loctite works well. Uh, you know, and just basic things: pen, pair of scissors, um, some heat shrink tube if you've got it. Now, the first thing you want to do is take the batteries out of the back of your controller and then place something soft down on your table so that you don't damage any of your switches or sticks. Uh, if, you could also do it sitting on the couch with the controller between your legs if you feel comfortable doing it that way, especially if you've only got one hand. Now you just want to go around and undo all the screws around the back. Uh, most controllers have six sets of screws all the way around. Sometimes there's something up around the aerial here that needs to be unscrewed as well. But most controllers have this type of configuration. So you want to go ahead and do that. Um, then, I'll put this one aside for a sec. This one has already been opened. You want to be very careful when you open these controllers up because there can be extra wires connecting from the top. Uh, you may need to go in and very carefully with a pair of these clippers and unclip or cut any tiny little cable ties that may be holding wires together. Uh, in a more severe case there may be some of these top switches may be wired directly and you may need to unscrew one of these switches. But in most situations, just like you've seen here, it'll just open up. There are a couple of cords at the bottom holding it together. You can unplug those if you feel you want to or if you're really careful you can leave them plugged in. Okay, the next thing I'd get you to do is grab a little bit of tape and just mark your low throttle position. That is wherever the lowest position of the throttle is on your controller. Now obviously if you're flying mode 2, that would be on the other stick. Now the throttle stick is going to be coming out of the controller, that way later on I know where my low throttle point is and that will make more sense later on when I show you that end stage. So now we're going to flip this over and open it up and uh, go to the next step. Okay, now that you've got your controller open, um, obviously different controllers will look a little bit different, but I still want you to do the same thing. Basically I want you to find the leads coming from the sticks, so these pots on here. Track those leads down till you get to a plug. Uh, now both of these leads on this one are going to the single plug, uh, maybe on some controllers they could be going to two plugs. And then on the other side, do the same thing and follow it down. There's another plug in there. Obviously, you'll still have your stick in here, so you'll be able to track those leads. Now, if you're flying a Mode 1 controller, I want you to go and unplug both of those. So, unplug the plugs for both sticks, so for all four pots. If you're flying a Mode 2, you only need to unplug the one coming from, uh, the two leads coming from your throttle, which would be this one over here. So you'd be unplugging this plug and leaving this one in place. Now, on some controllers, these leads might be hidden underneath a bit of circuitry, so you may need to undo a couple of little screws and flip that over so that you can gain access. Uh, one other thing that can be worth doing um, before you pull these out is uh, either writing down or making note of where these plugs came from. Uh, you could use a coloured texture, a different colour for each plug, and mark it on the plug and then a bit further down on the board, just so you remember where they came from. And uh, also take your time getting them out. They can be a bit tricky. Sometimes using a little tiny screwdriver like this to help pry them out can be useful or um, getting the use of somebody with another hand. And uh, yeah, so just take your time. And uh, yeah, as I said, if you're flying mode 1, unplug both of these. And if you're flying mode 2, just unplug the two leads coming from your throttle. And then temporarily put it back together, flip it back over, ready for the next step. Alright, now that uh, either one of those or both of those are unplugged, like you can see here, I want you to put your controller back together like this, just temporarily, and unscrew the screws 
the four screws around here on the throttle. Now if you're mode 2 it will be this one over here. So go ahead and undo those and then open up the controller again and that will come back out and you'll have the whole unit out like this. Okay now what you're going to do is grab the servo extension lead, just a standard servo extension lead, about 30 uh, centimeters long, and cut that in half. It's a bit difficult because I'm only using one hand. Cut that in half. Okay, now I want you to turn the servo, servo lead around on itself and plug it into itself so that you end up with this plugged in and bare wire on the other end. Then go ahead and um, pull these three uh, leads away from each other and uh, strip each end on both ends. And then on your controller, cut this lead roughly in half on both, whether they're going to one plug or two, it doesn't matter. And do the same thing. Uh, take a bit of the plastic stripping off the very end and uh, separate the cables a little bit. Then you're going to want to get a bit of heat shrink. Now you could use tape later, but heat shrink is a lot better. And cut some small lengths and thread it onto here. I'll do that and I'll uh, show you how that looks. Okay, now once you've done that, you should be looking at this. So we've got our extension lead stripped back and separated with uh, three pieces of heat shrink tube sitting on there ready to go. And then we've done the stripping as well on these three cables coming from our controller. Next thing you want to do is to match up these colours as best you can and uh, twist those together and solder them. And then slide your heat shrink back over the, uh, the, the, the exposed wire, heat that up to shrink it and then uh, that's finished that process. And then you basically want to do the same thing to the other end all the way down here and match up the colours. Now sometimes these cables won't have the same colours as your extension leads. That doesn't matter as long as the, you match up the colours at, at each end. And then you'll end up with this. So we're basically starting at this end, coming out of our controller. These are our first set of three joiners that we've done. Coming down through the plug to our other set of joiners that we've done into our final plug that goes back into the transmitter. So all we've effectively done is extended extended the length of the lead coming from the stick to the transmitter but we've also got some plugs in the middle here which are important we'll get to that shortly. Now the, this, the next thing I want you to do is to label these. Uh, this here is a mode 1 controller so it is throttle and aileron. If it was a mode 2 controller this would be rudder instead of aileron. Now if you're not sure which lead is which, you just have to look at the pops on here. So in this direction you've got throttle and it's lined up over here so that lead coming out of that pop is for the throttle and then you've got another one on this side for this direction so the leads coming out of this one are for your rudder or aileron depending on your mode. The only other thing I want you to do at this stage for this is to grab a little cable tie or something similar and attach the cables to the bottom of the stick here just making sure that when you move your stick in all directions that there's enough wire so the wire doesn't fail anyway. And then we're ready to go into the next step. Okay now the next step may get a little bit confusing so bear with me and I'll try to make as much sense as I possibly can. If you are flying with a mode 2 controller this is currently how your setup should look You've got your one stick still in here and, and your empty hole here. Now if you're flying right handed it stays like it is. If you're flying left handed you'll need to unscrew the four screws on the front side of this and swap it over to this hole. Bear in mind that we're looking at this from the, uh, the other way around. So this is actually the, right, the, the side for the flying right handed and this is the side for flying left handed. Now that you've done that I'll get you to grab your lead off your other controller, unplug it from the, the stick and plug it back in where it came from. Plug it back into there and then throw these extenders out the hole. So they're sitting out of the hole like that. Once you've done that you can close up the controller and uh, you're ready for the next stage. 
Okay, now, if you are a mode 1 flyer, like I am, uh, you will have not put this back in yet. Both of them will be sitting out like this, both extended, ready to go. I'll get you to grab the controller that is not the throttle and put it back into your controller. And now, if it's on this side, that means you'll be flying with your right hand, and if you've got it on this side, you'll be flying with your left hand. Uh, as I said, once again, bear in mind we're looking from behind, not in front. Then, I'll get you to go ahead and plug your leads back in, not connected at the moment to the sticks. So that one goes there. Now, just take your time with doing this. There's no need to rush it, you don't want to break your controller. Bear in mind too, if you're using a brand new transmitter, it may still be under warranty and you may be voiding that by doing this. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so on this one we've got our throttle and our aileron. Now you want to take the throttle and stick that out the hole. Our aileron is going to be going to this pop here, our side to side movement. So we're going to follow that lead out to this plug. Now, this is a bit tricky one handed, so bear with me. In fact, I'll do it in a second. So basically, plug those two in together. Then we are left with our rudder coming from our rudder plug, which I'll get you to plug that lead back in as well. And then that one is going to be going out the hole. Then our other one coming from that plug is our elevator. Now the elevator wants to be plugged into this pop here, the up and down pop. So you just follow that lead down, and as you can see, those two are already plugged those two in. So that's the setup for doing mode one. Now that that's all done, you can put the controller back together and flip it back over, ready for the next step.